she gone. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So last week I actually got in a pretty bad accident with my daily driver, which is my old Nissan Pathfinder. Luckily not our Subaru Crosstrek, but I was coming home from the beach with my buddy David and we're going like 60 miles an hour on the parkway. It was raining really hard and come around the bend and there was a car that was spun around on the left lane. There were cars to my right, so I had nowhere to go but go into the grass since we're going 60 in the rain. And of course, the guy that spun out backs into the grass, so I ended up slamming into him. Of course, the car is pretty banged up going that speed, but I'm surprised that my insurance company actually did not deem my old almost 200,000 mile vehicle a total loss because I'm pretty sure this truck is not worth more than four or $5,000. And the repair shop that they had me take it to estimated the damages to be about $6,000. So I am pretty mind blown that they handed me a check for the repairs and they did not tow my, my vehicle away and declare it as a total loss, but I'm not gonna complain. The car is still drivable. So what I wanna know is if I can fix this car at a fraction of the cost and get it back on the road. I mean, this car still drives all right. It just, it makes a ton of noise whenever you're turning and you have to hold the steering wheel to the left in order to just go straight. Obviously, there's a lot of caster and toe issues right now with the wheel being set back towards the apron. So this thing definitely needs the lower control arm replaced at the very least. And then we're gonna get a suspension alignment and hopefully that's enough to get it to factory specs. Just wanna give you guys an idea of what the starting point is before we touch anything. That sounds terrible. Give you guys a closer look at the damages. Grill clips are broken. Headlight, obviously. Signal lights. Fender. Upper rails pushed in. Hood is mangled. The wheel definitely has negative camber. It's pointed out. While well, the left wheel is still straight. And then the wheel is pushed back. Bumpers all torn out. Fog light. Mounting points broken. There's a panel missing there. Bumper beam is pushed in. Washer fluid reservoir cracked. It's definitely got a lot of work to do. Funny, the grill just fell off as soon as I opened the hood. But luckily, the engine and battery, radiator, condenser, shroud they're all in the clear so this is actually the reason why i'm considering fixing this car since it still turns on and drives just fine it's just a bunch of cosmetic items that need to be addressed and a matter of lining up the passenger side headlight with the hood and uh, fender gaps I actually got pretty lucky with the headlight housing all being shattered like that. The LED headlight kit that I just installed recently is still fully intact. So we're gonna use this on the new one. The impact bar, however, definitely has to be replaced. So you'll notice the right side got pushed in and it caused it to buckle and pull the center upwards and forward. You'll notice it's like six inches away from the core support on the right side and it's only four inches away from the core support on the left side. So we're gonna order one right now. So this Pathfinder has been kind of my beater for a couple years now, so I don't really care too much about how it looks, but I do care that it gets me places safely. So I'm gonna start by fixing the mechanical side of things first. I know for a fact the lower control arm is bent because the wheel is pushed back towards the hinge pillar. So we're gonna replace that first and then we're gonna take it out for a drive, get an idea how much it improves the driving. And then we'll eventually take it to a suspension alignment shop or a tire shop just to confirm that the tow, caster and camber specs are within factory specs. And then we'll focus on the aesthetics. I just ordered a lower control arm from Amazon. This one's actually by Dorman. Here's the part number in case you want it. Comes pretty complete with a lower ball joint, bushing, even came with a little cotter pin. 
but I'm, I don't think I'm actually gonna use this ball joint though. I'm gonna use the OEM one for now. I'm just gonna set this one aside. You can't really see too much just by setting them side by side, but you will notice that this portion of the control arm is buckled and it's lifted versus this side. We'll see, let's put it on and see how it drives. So I just have the control arm set in place. You'll notice I have the three 17 millimeter nuts for the ball joint fully torqued down, but the bushing bracket is not fully tightened yet. Same thing with the bolt that goes through the subframe. I left those relatively snug, but not fully torqued down. I'm gonna let the SUV down to put some more load on the bushing to get it positioned properly before we fully torque those down so that the bushings are properly preloaded. So good news is it stopped making that horrible, horrible clunking and clicking noise when I turn right. The steering wheel is still pretty crooked, but we are gonna get a suspension alignment just to confirm that the tow specs can be brought back to factory. But so far so good, making a lot less noise and driving a lot better. The next thing I wanna focus on is straightening out the radiator core support, upper rail, fender area, uh, and the panel behind the headlight so we can make room for a new headlamp assembly and turn signal. The brand that I'm using for the headlight assembly is TYC. It's the part number in case you want it. But it does come complete with a bulk, an insulator in the back, and then the turn signal lamp I'm using is by Depot. Here's the part number in case you want it. This one does not come with a socket though. It just comes sealed like that. So I'm probably gonna have to buy one separately. Got the upper rail and the fender pushed out so the hood can now close and line up with the fender gap at least get it close for the new fender now i'm going to take out the rest of the fender liners and stitch this bumper up i don't really care too much about the front bumper since this is kind of a beater i'm not going to replace this thing i'm just going to stitch that crack and then we're gonna get a better look at the core support and what we need to do. Here's a closer look at my ghetto ass stitch job. Now I gotta do the same thing for the bottom tabs. 
Just had a couple packages delivered. This big one's really light, so I'm gonna assume that this is the replacement fender. Let's go see what's inside. We're doing really well on the budget so far. I don't even think I've spent $500, honestly, between parts and tools that I'm using for this project. And this fender is really well packaged, considering I paid maybe $100 for it. Looks to be the right design. No dents. Can't believe you can get a replacement panel like this for a hundred bucks. Got ourselves a clear coat, filler panel, the missing piece that's beside the fog lamp. I think this was like 11 bucks. This one I'm really excited to try out. This is supposed to be pre-mixed KXO paint coat. Uh, so it's supposed to match the vehicle paint exactly. I've never used pre-mixed factory paint coat spray cans before, but we'll see how well it turns out. And here's how it looks after two coats of paint. Unfortunately, I ran out of uh, base coat. That spray can was all I had. I just kind of want to get an idea of the base color match before I buy more, since they are a little bit expensive. You'll notice that it's a satin finish, and that's because it doesn't come with color coat built in. We're gonna spray that separately. And here's how it looks after two coats of clear coat. It's definitely looking a lot closer to the factory finish. We're still not done though. We're gonna let this cure overnight. Set it side by side. It's starting to look very similar. Finally got the slide hammer kit that I ordered from Amazon two days ago. This is a 10 pound slide hammer. I'm gonna be using this to reshape the radiator core support. We're gonna pull out the passenger side headlight area, and then we're gonna pull the upper rail outward, and then we're gonna install the new fender. Hopefully everything lines up well. Here's how we're looking so far. Obviously, I still gotta transfer some hardware and the fender flares on there, and then I'm gonna add a pinstripe so it blends in a little better. The replacement impact bar that I ordered from eBay for $96 three days ago just came in. So it's time to replace the bent one on the car. Hopefully this gets the front bumper lined up with everything else.
I was actually pretty lucky that the rails didn't get touched at all during the accident. So I have no doubt that this car is going to drive straight after the alignment. But only unfortunate thing is the impact bar arrived a little banged up thanks to FedEx. Now driving over to the alignment shop. Hopefully everything goes well. So far so good though. No odd noises, no clunking. Hood's not flying off. All right guys, well so far I got the new impact bar installed, bumpers all stitched up, and then we got the radiator core support pulled out just enough so we can install that new fender. Headlight assembly, turn signal, put the grill back on and get it all to line up properly and then folded the hood back just enough so we can fully close it and get it safely to the alignment shop. Once the alignment shop confirms that they're able to get the caster and tow specs back to the factory, then we'll know that we can safely drive the vehicle and it doesn't cause any premature tire wear. Then I'll invest more time into the aesthetics. So far, I've only spent about $640 on this project, including the alignment, but I still gotta hunt down a couple things like the windshield washer reservoir and the turn signal and fog light sockets which have been discontinued by nissan so i might have to go back to a junkyard and hunt those things down but i do have to go to kansas city for the weekend but when i get back i'm going to give you guys an update video but if you enjoyed today's video do me a favor and hit that like button and if you like this kind of content want to keep up with the pathfinder or any of my other projects consider subscribing to this channel but this is going to be it for today thank you for watching